Hey everybody, it's Frank from Motivate. Okay, I've got the big update for you. There's many things I'm going to show you. We're gonna get started right now. First, we'll start the car. No, that's nothing special, you've seen that before. And to be honest, I kinda like it, so I'll keep it for now. Okay, so I've mentioned that I've been able to reconfigure the navigation um, EV unit. And I've done that. So let me show you a couple of things. So if I come over here to info, we you may notice new settings. Um, under fuel economy, we now have tire pressure. So we will select that. Now, right now, no tire pressure is being displayed um, for two reasons, actually. First of all, the car is not moving, but uh, even if the car was moving, I wouldn't be able to display anything as I have my winter tires on, which don't have the TPMS sensors. Um, however, I have verified this does work uh, on my test bench from a CAN bus log of my car I recorded last summer when I had on my summer tires that do have the tire sensors and the data was displayed. So that is awesome. We now have an easy way to get tire pressures. What's kind of interesting is it's a real boring display and it doesn't even identify each tire. So I will validate this, uh, but it looks like the very top one is the front left, followed by the front right, followed by the rear right and the rear left. So just think about it. If you get out of your car and you walk around your car clockwise, that would be the list of tire pressures that are there. Okay, so we'll hit back. And this is kind of a silly thing. We'll come down here to trip computer and hit enter. So here it shows us our elapsed time, driving distance and average speed. Now, when I first enabled this, I was curious to see what it is going to display. So clearly it's been tracking something for a while because the driving distance is 92,000 kilometers, but my car has like, Let's see, 120,000 miles. I don't know what's that like a 180,000 kilometers. So that's kind of weird there. Um, so we'll just get back from that, and we'll come back to here. One more thing. So here we can see we have it on the FM screen. That's fine. We're gonna push the disc aux button a few times. There's our disc. There's our music box. There's our Bluetooth audio, and we have a new screen, aux in. So. In the reconfiguring process, we have enabled auxiliary video and audio in. So I've done a bit of testing with a Wi-Fi to video box and I'm able to get my phone screen onto this screen here. The resolution isn't very high just because of the system itself. Basically it's about 640 by 480. So things are a bit fuzzy, but it may be useful enough. I'll do some more testing and that'll be in a future video where I can show that to you so we can have video on Oxen because I thought that would be kind of nice to have. Okay, so let me get onto the GTR gauges. So this is the unit that does all of the work and it is currently powered by that. And that's just because I haven't put the power supply on the board just yet. This makes it a little bit easier for testing. And of course here is the, as you can see the wire comes into this plug and that comes right down here and we'll get that plugged into the diagnostic port and that's good there. And then now we will Oops, power it up. Ah. Okay, we got red lights, that's good. Now, what I've had to do, I had to put in a six second delay. Now, okay, so did you see how that uh, blue light came on? I have to put in a six second delay because this device boots up in like half of a second and the nav unit takes about five. So by having this with a six second delay, it sends out the needed stuff um, in order for the GTR gauges to work. So now, if I push preset one, we have our GTR gauges. Now notice the Polyphony Digital. So that's the company that Nissan hired to do these gauges. And they are the creators of Gran Turismo for the PlayStation, which is really kind of cool. So we'll talk about the GTR gauges in detail. Um, as I've mentioned, I've been able to sort of do some reprogramming and also I've been able to remap some buttons. So over here we have the TPMS light and I've mapped button six to basically, uh, it's an equivalent function like clearing the check engine light. So I'll just get my finger there. Okay, we can see the TPMS light is on. 
I'm going to push it and it's off. So the reason I have it set to a button right now is to understand how often I have to send the reset command to the body control module. And right now it looks like once a day is all that it needs. The TPMS light will come back tomorrow when I drive the car again. So I've got more testing to do because I want to figure out the minimal amount of times to send that command out and uh, to keep the light off. But for right now, it's so nice to have a clear dash. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's awesome, uh, especially when driving at night. Okay, so for the GTR gauges, um, there's multiple ones there. We can use this button here to go across and we can also turn the whole dial. And then on the steering wheel, if I push down, it goes to the next one. See, down, next one. So we'll just go to the first gauge right here. And here we have boost. Now, boost is what it's called on the GTR because it's turbocharged and it actually does have positive pressure on the intake. Um, any car that's normally aspirated, there is no boost. So I had to get this value from a, um, basically from, from OBD using a, a mode one request. So basically this is the map sensor. So on any normally aspirated car, this will never get over zero. It will never get positive. Um, however, if you are boosted with Ecutech, from what I've been told, and I will verify, um, the boost gauge will function as it should, which is great. Top right is speed, bottom right is the gas gauge and the fuel range. Now, what's really nice with the GTR gauges, so we can see in the bottom it says custom view one. So gauges one, two, three, and four, we can modify. If I push and release on a gauge, we can set it to whatever we want. Let's just go to the top and have a look at the list. Engine coolant temperature, engine oil temperature, engine oil pressure, transmission oil temperature, transmission oil pressure, and I've actually repurposed this gauge to show differential oil temperature. Since the 370 G37, we don't have a temperature oil pressure gauge that we can access. Um, boost, fuel range, fuel flow, recent fuel economy, cornering G-force, acceleration braking G-force. Unfortunately, the car does not have that sensor. The um, G37, 370 don't have that sensor, so there's nothing there to show, and it's difficult to add. Um, total G-force, and we can reset it to a default view. So let's just come here, and we will look at, oh, I don't know, just for fun, we'll do engine oil pressure. And there is our engine oil pressure gauge which is quite nice, you get a bit more detail. So we'll touch that again, and let's make it oil temperature. And there's the engine oil temperature gauge. And that's also kind of nice. So I'm just gonna put that back to where it was, which was boost, and there we are. So we're now going to go over to this gauge here. And top left is an engine coolant temperature, engine oil temperature again, engine oil pressure, fuel flow. You can see that there. Uh, transmission oil temperature. Now, my car is a six speed manual, um, and I have put in a oil temperature sensor. Actually, it's a coolant sensor from a center of all things, um, into the manual transmission to get the manual transmission oil temperature. I was really curious to see how it how high it gets. And then on the bottom right, it says trans oil pressure. I still need to change that text, but basically that is the differential oil temperature. And that's coming from my Bluetooth server sensor. So from the Bluetooth server sensor, we're getting engine oil pressure, transmission oil temperature, and differential oil temperature, which is shown on the gauge here, the screen here, the trans oil pressure. So that's kind of cool there. So here we have fuel flow, and from what I've been able to see, of course, this is scaled for the GTR. So basically at 7,000 RPM, wide open throttle, we're right about the two o'clock position. <laughs> Sorry, I'll go back there. Um, we're about the two o'clock position there is about the maximum it gets, at least on my car. My car is stock except for a still an exhaust. Top right is fuel range and the gas gauge. Bottom right is the average fuel economy. And that will show up once we are driving a bit. Again, we get the accelerator pedal, we get brake pedal, 
got our steering and our cornering g-forces which do work but the acceleration braking do not and total g-force which in this case here it's just going to be the cornering g-forces now all the screens are labeled a b c d e f and g we cannot change if i put my finger on it there's nothing that will happen there so this shows us acceleration which will always be zero we don't have that sensor it's difficult to add we do have the map sensor in the top right there we can see it responding and the excel pedal on the bottom right over here on b we've got braking g's again don't have the sensor so nothing will show here but zero we do have our vehicle speed and our brake pedal percent Actually, the brake pedal is really brake line pressure. I've just mapped it to um, percent because that's how the gauge is labeled. Over here, we have steering. As we can see, we that turns there in the bottom right. And we've got some quartering forces that will show up here. And I'll show you that in a second once we get moving. Screen D, this is gear position. I'll show you this when we're moving as well. Um, it's kind of a neat animation. And um, again, my car is a six-speed manual, so I'm able to calculate the gear that the car is in, and I send it to the um, GTR gauges here, as well as on the dash. And I'll show you that once we get rolling. Um, e here is fuel economy. Um, basically, each bar is average fuel economy. It will show up as a vertical bar for each minute. And I've just been sitting here idling, so the fuel economy is low, because I'm using gas, but I ain't going nowhere. On F, this is a stopwatch. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. We don't have the button on the steering wheel in order to do this. And same with screen G over here, the driver's notes. We don't have the mark button to do that. Basically, it will just it marks the GPS location or something like that. But we do have a gas gauge in our fuel range, so that's cool there. So we will go back over to, well, you know what? We'll just go for a drive right now and you'll be able to sort of see the gauges move and I'll cycle through them. All right. Oh, it's a nice sunny day. How nice is that? Bad for filming. Okay, we'll turn away from the sun. So while we're here, just let me go to, there we are. So here's that neat little animation. So so that's kind of neat. And um, also on the dash, I show have the gear as well. And I'll, I'll show you that once I'm done here. Okay, so now we'll go back to the, we'll just loop around here, back to the first screen. Okay, nothing special there. Here we can see coolant temperature, engine oil pressure, engine oil temperature, all that good stuff. So the gauges are really working quite well. And the last video I showed you, they were a little laggy. I was only sending the data twice a second. Um, now I'm sending it uh, just over 12 times per second, like 12.5, but how do you send it half a time? Anyways, um, basically every 80 milliseconds I'm updating the gauges so just to make them more responsive. So that's working out well there. Nothing here. That's all good there. Hopefully it's not too blurry. Okay, so, all right, we've got braking and steering. Okay, so we've got a bit of a corner coming up. So we get a little bit of a sense of what that looks like. I think that's pretty neat. Okay, so if you look on the dash right there, we can see we have a nice gear position indicator. So it's on both, so if I change gears, you can see they both update at the same time. Okay, there's two more things I wanna show you. 
The first thing is how to change the units. Now really you shouldn't have to do this because whatever units your navigation system is set to, that's the units that are going to be used. But for whatever reason, if you do want to change it, I'll show you right now. So as we can see on the screen, all the temperatures are in Celsius. So if we come down here and select settings, and we go over and down to others and hit enter, come down here to language and units and hit enter. We can come down to units, hit enter, and pick the units we want. So if you want to put that into Fahrenheit, we select enter, and now we just hit back, 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 and back. And now all of the units are in degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's that easy to change. And again, you shouldn't have to do that. Now, the next thing I want to show you requires me to drive the car. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you is this. So I'm going to put it to the radio, have the volume turned down. Now, I've programmed it that as soon as the accelerator pedal is at 80% or more, the GTR gauges come up automatically. So let me show you that right now. So I don't know if it's going to be useful or not, but it's just something I thought I'd test for a while to see exactly how well it works. So let's do that again. We'll go back to radio and we'll accelerate here and they pop up. Anyways, that's all I got for right now. Um, I've got more testing to do. I've got some hardware to make, software to finalize. Um, I'm using every spare moment I have in my free time for this because I think it's really neat and I want to get it out to everybody. So that's my big update. I uh, hope you like it. It's been a lot of fun working through all of these different challenges. And uh, if all goes well, late spring, early summer, hopefully I'll be uh, well underway into testing locally. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.